My name is Jake Williams. I grew up in a somewhat small town just outside of Niagara Falls called Welland. I was across the lake from one of North America's largest cities. To me, Toronto was an ever-growing skyline of wealth and power. A bustling city that seemed like Canada's epicenter for everything interesting. But as I grew up and moved just outside the city, I learned that living there came at a cost. Quite a large one, in fact. For over a decade, the city has been going through unbelievable growth, trying to keep up with the immense demand. New developments quickly became investments, and often places to hide dirty money from foreign buyers. That drove up the prices. But despite all of this real estate being built as quickly as possible, it might shock you to learn that there are hundreds of abandoned homes and mansions all across the city of Toronto. So come along with me as we explore these unbelievable properties, the greed that fuels modern day development, and the extraordinary people we meet along the way. This is Toronto's Abandoned Mansions. Members of Council, thank you for braving the weather to come out tonight and allowing me the opportunity to speak. Uh, what we see here is the proposed plan of subdivision overlaid on, the air, on an aerial photo of the area. And as you can see, we are, in essence, putting uh, one of the last pieces in the puzzle for this area. Our journey begins in Richmond Hill, an up-and-coming, wealthy-leaning municipality of Toronto. This home was likely built in the 1970s, and it featured an indoor pool, a huge luxury, especially in the time. Over the years, the surrounding area was bought up and sold to developers for luxury single-family homes. In 2011, the local average price per square foot was $238. Today, it's over $520. This home is on yet another parcel of land to be developed into 13 new detached homes. The property was purchased by the developer and left in a state of limbo until they got their approval for new construction. But, unexpectedly, when we got inside, we soon concluded that we weren't alone. I just want to blow your shots, let me know. Okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seems like a nice guy. What is that, an intercom over here? Radio control, yeah. Oh, yeah. But still, this is a relatively nice kitchen. Looks like it was built in the 90s. Yeah. 90s or 80s, would you say, uh, Ethan? I'd probably say probably late 80s. Oh, yeah, you think late 80s? Yeah. Yeah, this, um, the cardboard countertop. Yeah, it's, a, it's the yeah. fake, uh... Wood countertop. Wood countertops, is right. Do you think it's too expensive for, for most people to afford? Yeah, it's too expensive for most people, I'm telling you, like... Mm -hmm. Like me alone, because I, I googled a house around here. They told me uh, uh, 1,800 mm -hmm. It's a basement. Just for a basement apartment? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it has everything. Right. But that one is too much for me. I can't, I can't even make 1,800 for the month. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you'd be paying so you uh, see, like, paycheck to paycheck. On, yeah. On so month, like, right? Instead of let me just wait here till I find a cheap place. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. if it's fine, I don't care. Yeah, well, it doesn't make things easier when all the rents are super high. And, yeah, like no, you're no. you're across the street from <laughs> homes that are millions of dollars. That's a million dollar. Oh yeah. yeah, even this home. It, I mean, yeah. I, you don't know how much the property is, but it, I mean, it, it's the least. It's a million, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bro, look, sure. look at the texture, look at the material they use, yeah. bro. Right. Look, yeah. those are all money, bro. This is artwork. Mm -hmm. This this artwork alone, bro. I do painting too. I do portraits. This artwork alone, bro. Right. This alone, bro. If I do this, bro, it's a big money. Right. You do? You paint? I paint, bro. You have any of your work? Yeah. Yeah. Let me take a look. I'm gonna see. Okay. Huh. So this one I just do it like. Let me just. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Damn, oh, these are cool. Stuff. These are awesome. Did you paint all of these here? Yeah. That's why. That's why I like this place because it's lonely, right? Yeah. 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 Right. All noise. 
The kind gentleman that we chatted with asked us to blur his face for what he said was out of shame. Shame that he couldn't afford to live in an area and resorted to take refuge inside an abandoned home. A building that was purposely abandoned for the sole reason to demolish and build luxury homes on. And that trend continues as we travel south, towards the city. Build your dream mansion across from Bridal Path. An exceptional opportunity to own a prestigious address and magnificent king's lot. That's an excerpt straight from the real estate listing for the property. It is currently listed for $5.28 million. This is a nice home. It's a lot bigger than it looks in the front. It does, yeah. Oh, look at this boy. This was remodeled relatively soon too, or relatively yeah. recent. Oh yeah. This room, this whole room here looks new. Wow. Man, look at this gorgeous window. Yeah, that's hot up here. Double door here. Oh, I got a fireplace there too. Oh, nice. Oh, this is beautiful. Right in the master. Genuinely, this is really beautiful. Oh my god. What? It's just so oh, rich. Wow. Very lavish. They got dual vanity too. It's like wow. gold, gold, what is this called? Etching? Gold, what's that like this? Yeah, this looks like uh, gold flakes. Yeah. Gold flaking. Wow. This is this is real nice actually. Yeah. The backyard here is covered in work walls. And that's because there's another brand new monster house being built right over here. Oh, do you think they severed their lot? They might they may have. There's a pool on your left too. Yeah, this backyard would have been really nice actually. Got a pool kind of out of view here. This looks like it was a step up. According to real estate records, the property was sold in 2016 for $3.8 million. The previous owners appear to have sold their home to a developer. Since that 2016 selling date, the home has been left dormant and unmaintained. That's pretty surprising, since the over 4,000 square foot home looks to be recently remodeled with seemingly brand new floors. However, the signs out front indicate something much larger and more lavish is planned for the property. But I guess after all, this is the magnificent king lot that you can build your dream mansion across from Bridal Path on. Which, speaking of... One of, if not the most expensive and affluent neighborhoods in Toronto, perhaps even Canada, is Bridal Path. The average home price here is $2.24 million, with homes listed for sale here well over $15 million. There's even one estate listed for $32 million. 
It's where famous business people like Robert Herchevec reside, or perhaps more notably, this guy. It's a residential construction site like no other. This 35,000 square foot mansion on two acres in the bridal path is the future home of Drake. Yes, that Drake. But what may shock you about such a posh, prestigious neighborhood is that there are multiple abandoned properties intermixed for one reason or another. Some were purchased for the sole reason to be demolished and built upon like Drake's house, but most are just in limbo, unable to be sold for one reason or another. Just eight doors down from the famous rapper's home is this property, last listed for sale in 2014 for $6.4 million. Its 8,000 square feet has five bedrooms and six bathrooms, plus an indoor pool. Holy crap. Oh my god. <gasps> this home is interesting. It was built in the late 1970s and was sold in 1988 for almost $3 million. Since, it has gone through multiple owners until the early 2000s, when it was purchased by a couple who practiced in the medical field. They stayed until around 2013, when the family moved to a larger home. What? No way. Oh, the, the bathroom still has power? Oh my god. How can that be? You gotta be kidding me. There's still power in this building. All the water damage. They I just probably haven't cut the power. Like, usually this place, the power's the first thing to go. Uh, wow. Who's paying the power bill here? That is unbelievable. Look at the damage. This building's gonna go up in flames. Oh, this house is just soaked in water. Look at the roofs, they're all about to collapse. Oh, there's spider webs everywhere. Oh, man. Look at the water. Damage coming down from the ceiling and the green moss. Holy smokes. Wow, this is a deep pool. Yeah. Expensive as hell. How expensive do you think this was? Uh, to lay all this cement, it looks like it's about 10 footer. This is, yeah, this pool is probably about 60, 65 grand. You think 65 grand to put this in? Oh yeah. For just, sure. the, just, just for the just pool. Just the foundation of the pool. Not the structure itself. No, nothing around it, no ventilation, just the cement alone. Which is curiously made of wood too. Yeah. It's like a dead rat. And this staircase is something else. I have my mask on now because it's pretty bad up here. Truthfully, it's pretty bad everywhere in this house, but especially up here. And it's hot. Oh, look at this. Wow. Sauna in there. 
Oh, this is right out of the 80s, that's for sure. Man, oh man. Oh yeah, look at the roof. It's completely cracked. The roof is gone. I think this house is right next. Oh man. Good Lord. I can't believe this house is in this condition. On one of the most expensive neighborhoods in North America. The property failed to sell at auction in 2012, with no one willing to put up the $5 million reserve. And after no buyers were found in 2014, the mansion just sat vacant. Oh yeah, look at the wine cellar in there. Mm -hmm. Man, oh man. Doors. Yeah, I know. It's like medieval themed. This place used to be. I guess it's solid wood here. Yeah. Like many other estates that just sit in limbo around Toronto, it's unknown what the future may hold. In my opinion though, I think this building is too far gone and eventually someone will tear it down and probably build something even bigger and more expensive. Our final location brings us to York Mills. Much like the other neighborhoods we visited, it too is up and coming for the wealthy. However, this property is unique in that it has been for the rich much longer than pretty much anything else in the area. This astonishing mansion was built in 1897. It's three floors high, has six bedrooms and seven bathrooms. It was owned by a prestigious doctor until his death at 97. The home was then put up for sale and marketed as a development opportunity at $6.6 .6 million. Holy smokes. This is gorgeous. This has been sitting for a while. Look at the, the water damage. This looks like the formal dining room. This home is very old, just by the, the heaters. I wonder. Oh! Oh my god. This building has power. Unbelievable. The property was eventually sold in 2018 to most likely a developer, and given its uniquely large land slot, the home will likely be torn down and the property divided up into two or three parcels of land for luxury mansions. Oh man, this is huge. Uh, these rooms are gorgeous. Just the curvature and the... <laughs> it looks like all the 
some of the bedrooms at least had fireplaces. Mm. Oh, this is like an independent study or something off the main bedroom. I take it that this was the master. I take it it's the master because uh, the grates are actually covered. Oh yeah, good point. And it's got its own bathroom. And... This is the dressing room. Whoa! Right? The dressing room connects to the bathroom. That's weird. Fascinating. Look at that. June 1988, the wallpaper. So I'm assuming when they put their wallpaper in, they made a, a note on the side of when it was installed and what type of paper it was so they remember. Oh, that's cool. That is made in England. Look at these. This looks like an original too. Whatever it is, there's no artist's signature. This doesn't look like an original, but this is so cool. Oh yeah, just this whole carpet is like <laughs> the yellow like, out of this world. Radiators, like it would have cost so much to heat this house. Oh yeah. Totally. Every single room in this place. What's cool about this area? This is on the third floor. Is that this? was probably when it was built at least, the servants' quarters, where they slept. I could be wrong, but I think so. What are you thinking, Brian? I'm thinking like Uplands vibes. Yeah, no, this definitely was the servants' uh, quarters, back when this was like an old traditional style home. Yeah. Wow. Wait, look at that industrial fan. Yeah. In the corner there. It's crazy. That's that's their revolutionized AC. That was retrofitted whenever you know they they did their things. You could see that this is all uh filled with cork mm -hmm. on the one side of the door, so it's uh is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's um yeah, so keep the noise out. <laughs> There's one bulb still on, that's creepy. There's an old vault. It has instructions. To open using the star as an indicator, crappily turn dial counterclockwise past the number 100 four complete times. Turn dial and then you move the handle, open the safe. Built and by JP Taylor Limited, Toronto, Canada. That's old. That's, That's very old. old. This, is, this is like solid iron. Yeah. If you don't close the door, it will lock. Try and get in there. Here's the master key, I think, too. Yeah, I think you're right. Hmm. And then there's all they're protecting is some antifreeze. You can see your breath down here. Yeah. It, the temperature change is so dramatic. I'd say. Here in the upstairs. All right. Well, I think it's time to get out of here. Toronto is going through an unprecedented development boom. Every week it seems like a new condo tower is announced, often shattering records and building taller. Condos which are often bought up by foreign buyers, mainly from China. It drives up the cost of living from people who don't even intend on using their condo unit. Instead, they wait until it appreciates, then sells it off. But this film isn't really about the condo boom, it's further north, into the suburbs. Something that is prevalent there too, but actually has a different problem. The sheer unaffordability of housing. Every single neighborhood we visited has nothing for rent under $2,000 a month. Now sure, that's cherry picking the wealthiest areas, but what shocked me about all of this is how much is just sitting empty and abandoned. 
Bayview Avenue, a huge up-and-coming thoroughfare connecting some of the areas we showed, is the most egregious example of this. There are many more than 15 homes left empty and abandoned, in some cases for years until a developer starts construction. For such a wealthy area, it's quite staggering to see so much blight on the streets. The avenue is dotted with city notice signs for development, in front of normal and in some cases relatively new homes and what they're building isn't exactly affordable housing. Obviously, building luxury residences isn't a crime, and I'm not saying it is, but I think when communities, over a rather short amount of time, transition into the ultra-rich area it was never intended to be, has its consequences. It puts up a barrier for most people. These small homes on Bayview are planned to turn into townhomes with a starting price of $2 million all while the regular single-family homes behind the billboards sit abandoned. This staggering wealth inequality is evident in the thousands of homeless people across the city of Toronto, some even hiding in plain sight. That's not to say the city isn't making an effort, though. While detached housing in the area under $800,000 is hard to find, the city is laying out a plan for affordable housing. On the other side of Canada, Vancouver passed a law installing a tax on all foreign real estate purchases in the city. Many are imploring Toronto to do the same. Despite whatever you may think, new development does breathe life into a community. It, for the most part, benefits the families who invested into their homes decades ago, and arguably makes the city a nicer looking place, when the former buildings they buy are actually demolished. Development is progress. The question is, is this progress in the right direction?